Hi, I'm Mike Ellis, and I'm showing you Azure Document DB, which was just released in preview yesterday. So I've only had my hands on it for a couple of hours, so I apologize if this video is a little rough, but I just learned a few things about it, and I thought I'd share them with you so that you can um, have an easy time of it. So when you first sign up for the preview, you get handed some PowerShell scripts. You run those PowerShell scripts the way they um, kind of outline you to do, and then you're ready to create your own Document DB resource. Now, in order to do that, you have to use the brand new Azure Management Portal at portal.azure.com. So if you haven't uh, switched over to it yet, you need to start switching over now. So you might not have seen this before, but it's kind of cool. So if you click new, uh, once you click new, click everything. And then once you click, see my resolution's kind of messed up, but what you want is data storage cache plus backup. So click on that. And then once you have that, you'll see Document DB right here. And when you click on Document DB, you can click Create. And then you can name your Document DB, your database, whatever you'd like to name it. So um, this is actually naming your endpoint. Now, when you name it whatever you're going to name it, you click Create, and then you have to wait like five minutes. It takes a little while to provision. But once it's provisioned, it's going to hand you back a URI and an authorization key. And that's what we're going to use in code. In fact, in my code, um, I just stored that URI, that endpoint, and the auth key. I just stored it in Configuration Manager so that I can kind of protect my secrets. But um, it, when you guys start using this code, you can just kind of take your URI and just replace this, this line right there, right with your URI and replace your auth key, you know, right here. So once you start your new kind of console application, what you need to use is NuGet, and then just use install-package microsoft.azure-documents.client-pre. And what that will do is it will just kind of auto-create um, so a couple of references for you. It'll put microsoft.azure.documents.client there and um, J JSON library there for you to use. Okay, so what DocumentDB is, is just a data store that stores a bunch of JSON documents in a collection. That's what it does. So what we need to do is connect to our endpoint and then create a database and create a collection. So I'm going to go ahead and start and walk you through that. So uh, I just, in my main sub, I just called this um, kind of async task right here. So um, first off, I go get my client. So I grab that endpoint and that auth key, and I create a new URI, and then I hand that URI into a new document client along with my auth key, and then I return the client. Once I have the client, I do the exact same thing with the database. So I call my database flashcards because I'm going to show you just a couple of flashcards, like a question and an answer. And so I say, OK, go look for the flashcards database. If it exists, hand it back. And in this case, it does exist. If it didn't exist, then use create database async, hand in the database name. And then once you created it, then hand that one back. But in this case, I already had it. And then do the exact same thing with collection. So I call the collection flashcards too. I know I called the collection and the database the same thing because I'm not too creative, but you guys get the idea. So again, look for it. If it's there, hand it back. In this case, it's not there. So it's going to create document collection async by handing the self-link to the database. Uh, that was it coming in as a parameter. And then creating a new database uh, collection with the same name. That name is flashcards right up here. And then once you create it, hand it back. And it creates pretty quickly, right? Now what I'm going to do is just create one flashcard. And then I'm going to create another flashcard. And the way I'm going to do that is by using this create document async, handing in a self-link to the collection, and then creating a new flashcard. Now, what's a new flashcard? Well, it's just these three string properties that I've decorated with JSON property. I've used the property name. Um, and it's just ID uh, is lowercase, just following kind of the JSON convention of using lowercase. So I've used ID, question, and answer. So now let's go ahead and create the second one. And now that I've got those two created, I want to iterate through both of them. So what I do is I just um, use create document query of type flashcard, and I just pass it out as an enumeral to list. And then once I've got the to list, I just for each over it. And in this case, here's my the first question, which is, when did Azure Document DB release in preview? August 21st, 2014. Press a key. And then step over it. And then my second question, which is, what is Azure Document DB's Twitter handle? It's at Document DB. Now, that's how to iterate through every document in the collection. What happens if I just wanted a specific one? In this case, I just want the first one. So I wanted to show you that code. That's the same thing, create document query of type flashcard, where the ID equals one. 
and then give me first to default. And you can see back in my console that, yeah, when did Azure Document DB release? That was the first one. So that worked the way we thought it should, right? Okay, now I showed you getting one. What happens if I just want to delete one? If I want to delete one, what I do is I say, okay, grab, this is this line 72, uh, where flashcard get equals ID, that was where it equals one. Um, hand me that back and then call delete document async. Um, hand that document, the self link. Use the self link all over the place. Like when I wanted a collection or when I wanted a document or when I wanted a database, you're using self link, passing it back and forth all the time. So it's no different here. I'm just going to use self link to delete a document. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to query for it again. And then this is going to air out to prove that that delete actually executed. And sure enough, it errors out and says, hey, that document doesn't exist. And that's it. That's using document DB with .NET. And I'll show you JavaScript a little bit later. And I apologize once again for it being kind of rough. As I get better at this, I'll, you know, should get better and better videos released to you so you can learn more and more about document DB. Thanks a lot, guys.